This is the Oast Garden, and uh, it's, it's late summer now. It's August, in fact, and normally gardens are, are really becoming quite grey and brown and boring by that stage. But uh, there's still quite a lot going on in here. It's partly because it's a late year, but also because there are lots of late plants. And so um, Agapanthus, all the way down the paths. This is a variety called Navy Blue, which I love in pots. And I've had them in pots now for about five years. And even when they go over, I love the green bead seed pods, um, even without the petals. So I, I love that. And then this massive, tall, perennial sunflower, which is called Helianthus Lemon Queen. And that's the whole idea about the Oast Garden is that it's not all sort of down here and really tidy and kind of man-dominating nature, but the whole idea is that it's sort of nature-dominating man. It's like Rousseau and like, you, you know, expect to perhaps see a tiger poking out kind of thing, um, but with a Howard Hodgkin palette, so really, really strong, lovely, rich, saturated colour palette, but with this sort of jungliness. So there's plants like this, Arundo Donax, the, the sunflower, and then right by the path, rather than at the back of the border, there's this lovely black leaf Sambucus nigra. Um, and then self-sewing, lots of self-sewing in here to make it feel very natural and relaxed. So this is Eringium, Miss Wilmot's ghost, and there's a very lovely story about this plant. Miss Wilmot was a famous gardener, Edwardian gardener, and um, she used to go into her friend's gardens, including Gertrude Jekyll, who of course is very famous, and she used to scatter seed of this plant, and it has to be very fresh, and you just have to direct sow it. And that's why it's called Miss Wilmot's Ghost, because the following year, because it's biennial, this plant would appear, so it would be like Miss Wilmot's Ghost. So I rather love that. And I allow that to self-sow all the way down the, the edges of the path. And then these are two quite new discoveries for me. I had walked past Argoranthemums in the garden centre so many times, thinking, oh, I don't know, maybe they're just a bit too neat and tidy for me but I am totally in love with them now because these have been honestly in flower since June. They just have not stopped. This is a variety called Agaranthemum Cherry Red. And I love it with this, which is Cosmos Dazzler, sorry, Cosmos Antiquity. And it's a very good variety for pots because it doesn't get too big. And you see the two almost match, but one bigger than the other. It needs a little bit of deadheading, the Cosmos, but apart from that, they are just so low maintenance. So planted in May, June, and they will just go on flowering until November, October. They honestly, honestly will. And then Rosa Moisei over there, uh, beautiful single flowers and a lovely sort of carmine pink. And then it's very famous for its beautiful uh, casket-like um, seed pods. Well, not seed pods, of course, they're rose hips, so it's silly to say. But do you see, they're, they're this extraordinary shape. And they start that green, then they go orange, and then they turn red. So they're, they're very beautiful. So you don't want to prune it too hard. So you get lots of those. Um, and then the Cosmia lucifer, a classic plant for August. And really beautiful with dahlias, really beautiful for picking. And so I've got things like dahlia, Sam Hopkins there with it. And um, Thomas Edison in there. Um, so more of the pots of the um, Arboranthemum. And then a canthus which also loves the sun, so that's why it's out on the edge of the path. If it gets in the shade, it tends to get a little bit mildewy, so you really want that out in, in full sun. And I like that just sort of romping around, around the pots. And then it's gone over now, but I, I've left it just because I find it so architectural. Angelica, and I, I probably will take that down in the next few uh, days or weeks, because it really is going over now. But it, it's just that has been since May, just dominating that whole border really, really beautifully. And um, another really favourite self server for me is Smyrnium perfoliatum. And it's beautiful acid green in April to May, and here we are in August. And I know it's going brown, but it's still pretty handsome. So I tend to leave that for a long time too. And so that's that axis. And then if you come here, what I love about this garden is it has this second axis, and uh, we're now living in the Oast House there, and uh, so you, you have this completely different view and a completely different feel with this much more formal Yorkstone path and the wonderfully highly scented Tracheospermum jasminoides on um, the balcony posts. Balconies um, on Oast are actually called green stages because that's where you would put the hops which were then put in the kiln to dry. 
And so that's what that balcony is. It's in fact somewhere for the hops to sit before they're loaded in. And the tracheospermin just works so well growing up the posts. And then the final new thing that I've added this year, which I'm so pleased with, is this new scented leaf pelagonium called Sweet Mimosa. Often I use deep saturated colours, and I do in here, but actually I really love that very pale, soft pink scented leaf pelagonium. Delicious in cordials, we use the leaves a lot. Delicious in blackberry and apple pie, but that lovely, lovely soft colouring is so nice, I think, against the grey of the oak. So I'm very pleased with that, and I'll definitely repeat it next year.